today, um, my message is a very simple one. It's entitled Faith, right? It does say faith up there, right? Hebrews, uh, key text is taken from Hebrews chapter 11. Actually, one of you know, I, I, I wanted to read the entire Hebrews chapter 11, but it's a bit long for that. So I've narrowed it to two, uh, to two uh, uh, verses, verses 1 and 6. And, um, and, um, and let's stand out of the respect of reading God's word. We'll read Hebrews chapter 1, or chap rather chapter 11, verses 1 and 6. Uh, verse 1 reads, let's read, it, uh, let's read this together. Uh, verse 1, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Thank you very much. Let's go to uh, the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you very much at this time uh, uh, to be here to preach your word. And Father, we ask for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit upon me uh, to preach your word according to your will, according to your spirit, and not according to mine. Father, we just ask that uh, the Holy Spirit of God will, uh, will also prepare the hearts and minds of all those here to receive your word and that, uh, and that your word uh, will bring forth good fruit in each and every one of us. So Lord, uh, I just thank you for what you're about to do as we commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen. All right, please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, as usual, uh, you know, I just want to do a quick recap of my last message. My last message was God has got no grandchildren, right? And I and I and I spoke about the heritage of the godly. Whether you are, you know, you know, uh, I spoke about Eli. Uh, Eli was a godly man. He was a judge of Israel. He was a judge for forty years, and 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 he was a man of God. Except, you know, you can. You know, just because he was a man of God didn't mean that his children were necessarily uh, uh, men or children of God, right? As Jesus told Nicodemus in, in, in John chapter 3, he, being a master of Israel, needed to be born again. So, are you a child of God or a child of Belial? Then I, then, then I spoke about the need of a spiritual rebirth and that nothing short of a spiritual, a spiritual rebirth according to to the demands of God will save you, will save anybody, right? You can't say, well, you know, you can't be like, like, like Frank Sinatra and say, I did it my way. God it will not be impressed. Lord, you know, I'm a good person. I do this, I do that. So, you know, you owe it to me to save me. No, it doesn't happen that way. It has got, it has got to be done God's way and God's way only. And God said, what? You need to repent. You need to put your entire faith in Christ. Not part faith. Not like, you know, one foot in the door of Christ and then one foot in the door of self. It's either you have both feet in the door of Christ or it's no deal at all. So anyway, today's message, I want to talk a bit, uh, I want to talk a bit about faith in God through Christ. And so my first point, the proof of faith. All right? The proof of faith. So we have a sub-point, description of faith. You look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, which we just read. Now faith is the what? It's the substance of things hoped for, comma, the evidence of things not seen. You know, per, per the, the, the Thomas Nelson KJV study, by, uh, study Bible, verse 1 does not define faith. Rather, it's a description of what faith is, right? In the, in the activity or the action of faith, there are found two components, substance and evidence, right? Substance may be defined as the assurance or, or confidence, right? We know when I commit my salvation to, uh, of my eternal soul to God, I have confidence that he will do it simply because he said he would, all right? It is a confidence in God for, to, to carry out what he tell, what, what he what he says that he will do. You know, if I, you know, if I do it his way, of course, I've got, I've got to do it his way and not my way. Hence, the thing hoped for, uh, the things hoped for per verse one, is the confidence that God will save me, right? The faith is the substance of things hoped for. When I, you know, when I say, God save me, I know that he will save me. So that's my confidence. This future event will come to pass when I close my eyes one last time, you know, on, on this terrestrial ball and reopen them 
instantaneously in God's presence. The evidence in the second part of, of, of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, may be defined as conviction. All right? You know, when I commit my salvation, uh, or the, rather the salvation of my eternal soul to God, I'm convicted that he will forgive me and that he will reconcile me to him. All right? Um, how will he do that? He will do that by the, by the forgive, by his, for, for, by his forgiving me of my, of my sin, of my past, of my self-righteousness. Of, he'll just forgive me, all right? For without repentance, there's no, uh, you know, there's no, there, 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 there's no forgiveness. So when I repent, he will forgive me. That is an unseen mechanism of salvation. That's my conviction that he will forgive me because he said he will, all right? Simple as that. Um, and that he and, and and by the giving of his Holy Ghost, right? And these are the things not seen, right? So if if I if I were to you know if if Pastor Sun were to come along and offend me and whatever and uh, and say well hey look you know if you don't repent I'm not going to forgive you and then he comes to me, to, to me and says brother Roy you know I'm very sorry um, uh, yes I'm using him as a, as an example now you know payback time right um, if he says brother Roy you know I'm truly sorry I I I I didn't know that that had happened please forgive me you know, and I repent. Then, then he puts his faith in me to forgive him because I said, look, if, look, if you don't repent, I'm not going to forgive. If he repents, then I will, you know, I'm not going to make a show and dance and, you know, you know, you know, some big fanfare and say, you know, I forgive you. And no, I'll just simply say, come, my friend, let's hug and let's get on with it. Right? It's things not seen. Now, in vernacular terms, it is like buying something off Amazon. All right? I have faith that Amazon is not a fly-by-night company. And whatever I buy on Amazon, and I forgot to, 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 to run my timer, but never mind. You know, you, know, you know, whatever I buy on Amazon, I will have faith that it will get delivered to me, although I'm not privy to the full internal operations of Amazon and its third-party uh, 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 partners, whatever. You know, all I know is that I have confidence the bucket of Australian Maltesers that I've ordered will eventually appear at my doorstep because of the unseen operations of the logistics company or companies, right? Okay, what do I do? I get on the internet, I click on this, I say put in the cart, I say check out, I pay, right? Then that's it. You know, I have faith that it's going to come. And I'm convicted that it will come because of, because, you know, Amazon or its partners will send it to me, right? And yes, I like Maltesers, right? Anyway, so that is, that is what, uh, that is the, this, 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 uh, no, I'm sorry, the, that is the description of faith. Then we have the action of faith, right? Chapter 11 of Hebrews is a wonderful, wonderful book, or rather wonderful chapter. That is a wonderful testimony of those who have put their faith in God, simply trusting in God for the final outcome, right? Those of you who have, you know, trusted in in Jesus to save them or to save you, all right, what is the final outcome? I will be in his presence when I die. Isn't that true? All right, faith produces action that pleases God, not self, not other men. All right, faith produces, uh, produces action that pleases God. The business, the business of my faith is to please God. I don't please Amy Sung. I don't please Collie. I don't please anybody, but I please God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says what? For without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Okay? So, so, so we have some examples of this faith in action. Right? And, and it's all taken from, from um, Hebrews chapter 11. So if you, know, you, can, you can just remain in that chapter. I'll just pick out some examples. One is Abel. Abel believed God and his demand for the, you know, for, uh, for the blood of innocence for the atonement of sin. Therefore, he gave up a bloody sacrifice to God and he received a good report from God for that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, by faith. All right, by faith. You know, Abel believed God, believed what God wanted and gave God what he wanted. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, right? By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God said he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts 
and by it he being dead yet speaketh. While Cain's sacrifice was excellent, the one offered by Abel was more excellent. It's just that Cain's wasn't excellent enough, and it was a bloodless one, and that's not what God wants, right? And, by, and, and for which he rejected Cain. Abel did, not, Abel did not bring to God his self-righteousness, which was something that Cain did. Then we got Noah. Noah heard God and believed him, right? Up until that time, there wasn't rain on the earth, right? There was this mist that came up from the ground and watered the earth. But yet when God told Told, told Noah of what's going to come. Noah, by faith, all right, his faith in God moved him to follow God's command to build an ark, during which he also preached the impending judgment of God. All right, because what? Why? No, why is that? You know, well, brother, well, you know, nothing in Genesis said that Noah ever preached. Well, somewhere else in scripture, God called Noah a preacher of righteousness. All right. So you can't, you can't just say, you can't just read one book and then say, well, you know, hey, where did you get that from? And I say, well, you know, from scriptures, right? In Hebrews chapter 11, verse, six, uh, verse 7, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen. These things haven't happened before. There was no great flood, no, you know, no, 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 no river Nile overflowing its, its banks and then what have you, and you know, no, no thunderstorms, no hurricanes, nothing of that sort being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. The fear was not like, whoa, I'm scared. Noah moved with reverence. With reverence. But the word fear is, is, is defined as reverence. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world. Right? God condemned the world. Here is an ark. This is the impending judgment of God. What are you all going to do? You must be mad, Noah. What is, what, you, what is this thing that you're building? What is this thing about? Rain. I've never heard rain. You know, I've never heard of flood. Well, they soon did. 120 years, God's judgment came. God, you know, God's time was up. God, for, for crying out loud, God actually told them when his judgment was going was gonna to come. 120 years. And they wasted that 120 years, and only eight souls were saved. Let me finish reading the, uh, the, the passage, right? By the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. God told Noah of some future event. He believed God. He did not tell God to show him the money. All right? Some people demand that. The Jews, the Pharisees, told Jesus, asked Jesus, give us a sign. You know, they must have been half blind, right? Or rather, maybe they're fully blind. What had Jesus been doing up until that time? The lame walked, the blind saw, right? The, the, uh, uh, the uh, you know, people were healed. All Jesus said was, get off your bed, arise, pick up your bed, and walk. And the lame walked. And yet, the Jews demanded a sign. I don't know about you, all right? If somebody walked out of a, you know, a dead person, walked out of a tomb, I will not say to Jesus, oh, what do you mean Jesus said, Lazarus, arise. Oh, uh, no, uh, uh, no, what was it? You know, they'll come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus did that. I will not ask Jesus, hey, haha, great, great trick. Now show me a sign. People are blind. Show me the money. No, the money is being shown already, that the, except that a lot of you are spiritually blind, and sorry, not you, but you know, they were spiritually blind and they didn't, and they refused to see. Per verse 7, all right, righteousness is by faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and then not of yourselves. We like to read this, right? It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Righteousness is by faith, not by works. You can't say to God, God, you know, I will, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hedge my bets. I'll put 50% faith in Christ and then 50% faith in my works. No, it's not going to work. It is not by works. Not of works, lest any man should boast. 
There's no place at all for man to boast. When God told Abram, as he was known back then, to get up and go, he didn't know where he was going to go, right? He didn't check with his tour director to see whether he needed to pack warm clothing, whether he needed to pack, pack his swimsuit or his skis or whatever. God said, go, he went. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. You know, a lot of us today, right, if somebody were to tell you, hey, um, you know, just leave your house and go. The first thing we're going to ask is, go where? Are you nuts? I'm comfortable at home. I've got my air conditioner to keep me warm, uh, to keep me cool. I've got my water heater to keep me warm when I take a shower. You know, I've got a kitchen uh, that, my, that my wife or I can cook or my children can cook in and we have delicious food. You want me to go? Why? Where? That will be our first reaction. No, Abraham did not do that. Abraham went. Genesis chapter 12, um, Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 4. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, right? Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. Basically, you get lost from your family, from your comfort zone, right? And from your kindred and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land I will show thee. Abraham didn't know where he was going. He only had God's word. God said, I will show you this land. Today, you know, if you know, I'm looking for something to buy. I will tell I will tell the agent where is this, where is this located, so that I can go by and have a look and see whether it is in a location that I like, whether I like the the transport infrastructure around the area. If it's not, I'll let you know I'm not interested anymore. If it is, I will I will I will make an appointment with you to go and have a look, right? Isn't that what we'll do? But yet, Abraham, when God told him, he will show him a land, he, he, I said, I will, sh uh, uh, unto a land that I will show thee. So he basically went sight unseen, blind. All he had, all he had to rely on was God's word, right? And verse 2, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3, And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All families. And the, the, this blessing is not reserved for the Jews only, but it says all families. And truly, for those of us who are saved today, all right, we are blessed in Abraham. Why? Because through Abraham came Jesus Christ. Verse 4, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And this act of faith on God was accounted unto Abraham for righteousness. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Salvation is simple. God said that he will save. God said that we are unable to save ourselves. God said Jesus Christ is the only way. Jesus Christ said, said in John chapter 14, verse, uh, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. All right? If you just believe on that, that is good enough. All right? By faith, Abraham was prepared and ready to offer up his only begotten child. Uh, you know, uh, you know, because he accounted that if God was able to give him and Sarah Isaac after they were well past their biological childbearing used by date, he was also able to raise him up from the dead. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 and 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and that he and and he that had re, uh, sorry, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Verse 18, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. All right, God told Abraham, 
you know, you're going to produce a son, Isaac, and in, and in Isaac, through Isaac, it's, you, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have children and, and, and descendants like the sands of the sea. All right, verse 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. Even if Abraham were to drive his knife into his son, Abraham counted God able to raise up dead Isaac. From whence he also received him in the figure. Verse, in verse 18, Abraham remembered God, remembered that God said, said, by Isaac will come a great nation. He had faith that God will keep his word. But he would sooner what? He had faith to obey God first. It wasn't say, God, you know, don't uh, you know, I was in my old age, you know, Sarah was old also, not able to produce anymore. A factory had closed down. But then suddenly sprung Isaac because you said, now you want me to kill him? Uh, uh, can you find somebody else? No. Abraham's faith in action was, I trust God. God promised me this. If he wants me to do this, I trust him that he will be able to raise up Isaac also. By faith, Moses chose to stand with God, knowing the end of his journey will be well worth the journey itself. Look at verses 24 through 26, uh, 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 Hebrews 11. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction, of the, uh, affliction with the people of God than to what? Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Right? You know, the thing is that we are all here for a season and then we die. All right? And then we die. And what happens after that? The judgment per night, per Hebrews 9 27. Verse 26 esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches, excuse me, than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Moses' sight was not set on the here and now. He was set on the promises of God. He was set on what will happen thereafter, the eternity, the recompense of the reward of God for his faith in him. Pay attention to verse 25. This is contrary to the wisdom of the world, which emphasizes self and hedonism. All right? He refused to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Right now, it's like, it's all about you. You know, this bank, get this credit card, you know, for every, for every dollar you, you, you charge the card, you get X number of points. It's all about you. Do what you like. Beat yourself. Right? Moses refused that lifestyle. The pleasures of sin endures but for a short season, after which the judgment of God is eternal. James 4.14 Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? For those of you here who are not saved yet, all right, pay heed to God's word. For ye, for whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, you're not gonna, you're not gonna happen. You're not gonna know what's gonna happen tomorrow. For crying out loud, you're not gonna happen. You're rather you're not gonna know. You don't know what's gonna happen in the next five minutes. Pastor Sung just now preached. You're preaching. You know, you know, can you can you you know for the next five seconds you think you will not sin? Yes. One, two, three. You get the idea. How about the next five seconds? Yes. How about the next five minutes? I can't say. So for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then it's gone. All right? What? No. One of my uncles is 103 or will be 103 uh, uh, next year. All right? He's in a wheelchair. He wears a beanie. I'm not wearing a beanie yet. But he's got an oxygen tube or feeding tube up his nose. But he's still alive. You know, in human terms, 103, wow, ripe old age. He lived a long life, a good life, blah, 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 blah. But what is 103 years in the presence of eternity? All right? Eternity doesn't stop. So 103 years is, is 
an infinitesimally small dot in the timeline of eternity. So, what is your life like? You know, again, let me just read that. You read James 4.14. It's such a great verse. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. And what happens when it does? Hebrews 9.27, the judgment. All right? Sin, the pleasures of sin endures but for a short season, after which the judgment of God is eternal. Right? Rather, Moses esteemed Jesus above and beyond anything that the world had to offer. The riches of Egypt, pa! I don't want that. I will suffer now. I will die later on. But hey, when I die later on, I will be in the presence of God. That is much better than anything any pharaoh, any world, any empire can offer him. My faith in God made Moses believe that whatever God said, he will bring to pass. And he acted on what God said he will do. Look at verse 28, chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed, uh, destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Moses trusted that, that the very simple act of staining the doorposts on either sides and the lintel with the blood of the Passover lamb was enough to turn away the angel of death. It was simple faith in what God said. Faith in action. And what did that do? For every household that had the blood of the Passover lamb, the angel of death literally passed over, passed over judgment. He went to the next house. If it was there, he went to the next house. He went to the, and he was stopped at the house that didn't have that. And what happened? The firstborn that household died. Pharaoh lost his firstborn that night. Work of faith. So we have the proof of faith, right? Description of faith, the action of faith. Then we have the work of faith, the trust of faith. The action of faith is devoid of any uh, human intervention or intercession. Genuine faith operates on the principle that if God said it, it is therefore enough, good enough, and that he needs none of our help. Pa- Pastor Sung this morning, right? Pastor Sung this morning preached something that, um, that, that, that was, you know, he, he preached something, and I, and I immediately wrote a message saying that, wow, you know, hey, it's in my notes, all right? Genuine faith, again, operates on the principle that if God said it, it is therefore good enough and that he needs none of our help. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9, Not of works, lest any man should boast. It is all God's work and none of man's. Because if man had, had, had to work, then it is reckoned of death and not of grace. God, you owe me all. God owes nobody anything. For it was man who sinned against God first. So God owes no man anything. If any man thinks that, well, you know, hey, God owes me something, uh, he is in for a very, very bad surprise when he does face God on that one day, assuming he, he faces God before, you know, without getting saved. Right? Man cannot, cannot have place where he said, I assisted God. I had a hand in this. Nowhere in the Bible is found God help those who help themselves or its equivalent. Nowhere. If anybody can find that in scriptures, please show it to me, book, chapter, and verse, and I will and I'll declare that I was wrong. All right? While traversing the Red Sea on dry ground with the Egyptian army pursuing, Moses did not offer God his help in any way. He just went as directed. You know, before I got saved, I told God I will stop sinning. All right? Yes. Pastor Sung is, is chuckling already. I told God, I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was sinning. So I told God, God, I will stop sinning, then I'll come to church. Well, that had an expected end. What was the expected end? I couldn't stop sinning. Even, you know, Pastor Sung said, well, that's before I got saved. All right? When, when you are saved, Pastor Sung preached earlier, when you are saved, all right, there's a new creature, there's you know, you are able to make a choice between, you know, you're not, you're not able to make a choice. Do I obey God or do I obey my flesh? Do I want to obey God or do I, do, or do I want to obey the flesh? Right? 
So anyway, it is not until I learned to let go of my own self-righteousness that he was able to do the work of redemption in me. I had to take a big step backwards and said, God, you save me. It is all him, none Roy. Right? God is either in full command and full control or he's not in command at all. He's not going to fight with you. Which is why he wants our repentance. Turning from ourselves and turning to him. Paul told the, 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 the Thessalonians, they turn to the living God from idols. Right? He's either in, God is either in command or he's not in command at all. He does not share command. God is not anybody's co-pilot. I've seen, I've seen bumper stickers, God is my co-pilot. My goodness. If he is your co-pilot, that means you're the pilot and you're the pilot in command, in charge. And God takes instructions from you. That's what a co-pilot is. All right? There's the captain and then there's the first officer. So anybody with that, with, that, with that bumper sticker basically saying, I am the captain and God is the first officer and therefore God takes my instructions. It's incredible. Look at Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, my, and my glory will I not give to another, and neither my praise to graven images. He will not share command with anybody. All right? So we have the trust, the trust of faith, and then we've got the point of faith. The point of faith is to have us take our eyes and reliance off ourselves and unto Christ who being, the, who being on the right hand of God makes intercessions for the faithful continually. But before I get into that, I just want to read from Psalm chapter 91, verse 2, which we just read earlier. The psalmist said in verse 2 of Psalm 91, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him Will I trust? Right? When you're a place of refuge, you are taking, you know, you know, you're sheltering from, from something that's that's adverse, whether it's a storm or whatever. All right. If you are taking refuge in a fortress, this is what you're not gonna do. When you get into the refuse, uh, uh, refuse, refuge you're not going to stick half your body out. When you get in a fortress, you're not going to stick half your body out with a pursuing enemy shooting arrows at you. All right? You're not going to, be, you're not going to make yourself a pincushion for anybody. You're going to be in it, and the doors are going to be shut. So the thing is that faith in God is either total or not at all. The point of faith. The point of faith is for us to take our eyes and reliance off ourselves. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. You know, while the, world's, while the world prepares us to, 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 to celebrate Christmas, as we go out there, we hear Christmas songs and things like that. And, and you know, I, you know, I, I see these, these oversized Christmas trees, you know, Christ is born, Jesus is born. Yeah, what's the big deal about Jesus being born? All right? We have a pair of expecting grandparents. All right? When is, uh, when is, when is, when is, Antoinette going to give birth uh, sometime in late January, right? Or thereabouts, all right? So what's the big deal? I was born. Amy was born. Every one of us were born at some point in time. You know, a baby will be born soon, all right? Grace was born. So what's the big deal? Jesus is born. Yeah, big deal. Ho-hum, la-di-da. How about this? Jesus rose. But people don't get that. Many people don't get that. But anyway, I've, I've gone on a tangent, all right? Let me just finish reading Romans chapter 8, verse 34, all right? Who is even at the right hand of God, of God, who also maketh intercession for us? There's none out there who can outgive God, who gave his only begotten son for the whole world. God exists outside of time, being the creator of time. He sees and knows every one of our needs, even before we know about them. As such, he 
wants us to simply rely on him totally, casting our cares and concerns and woes upon him. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Humble yourselves there, uh, therefore under the mighty hand of God. We need to realize this. We need to get off our high horses. We need to get off our stools of pride. We need to humble ourselves under the, the, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. God is not this God who is like far away. Like, it's like, like, like some of these, um, like some of these uh, 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 other gods, you know, you know, you know, in, 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 what, in Greek gods, Roman gods, Nordic gods, or what have you. For those of you who might have watched uh, uh, one of the later uh, Thor movies, where, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, Zeus, right? Zeus was this god. I mean, I can't, I, I can't describe him. It's like, it's, like, it's like he's an impersonal god, right? He's, he's the, you know, you are there for his entertainment. But not so with God. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. God gave us Jesus Christ, that through Christ, by Christ, we may have eternal life. And, 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 you know, God is not going to say, well, you know, done, I'm going to take a big step back, back, backwards and then I don't care about you anymore. No. Scriptures say he cares for us. But to do so, like I said, we must humble ourselves before a thrice holy God. Right? The point of faith is for us to trust him entirely. He cares for us. He wants us to care, to, 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 to rely on him, to trust him fully. And as I said earlier, all right, if we, tr if we entrust our eternal souls to, G to Christ, to God, to save, we can entrust to God everything else. The, superi the, the, the superiority of faith. Genuine faith in God is superior to anything any man, corporation, or government can achieve. We all like government handouts, right? I like it. Very occasionally, no, very frequently, the Singapore government says, well, you know, we'll give you this, we'll give you that, we'll give this hunt this money, we'll give you that money, and, and, then, and, then, and then come election time, don't forget, ha, right? Anyway, that's a joke. Look at Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Safe. Right? It means that a faithful child of God has access to one who, by the word of his mouth, created everything. Now, the thing is that fear of man, fear of man brings us, uh, bring us a snare. Why? How? You know, um, 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 it's like, uh, uh, you know, my credit card has, I've, it's near its limit. I need to spend. I've got needs. So what do I do now? I need to run to my banker and speak to my banker and say, can you raise my, my spending limit, blah, blah, blah. You know, otherwise, the fear of man leadeth to us, uh, 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 bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. All right? Oh, there's COVID right now. What do I do? Do I go out there and buy more toilet paper? Right? You know, I find it amazing that that, 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 that in the early days of COVID, people were more concerned about toilet paper than anything else. But hey, you know, to each their own, I suppose. Um, the thing is that, the thing is that, whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Look at Psalm 33, verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. All right? Would you sooner go to your banker, your doctor, your government, your MP, your, uh, your minister for whatever your needs are? How about, how about this? How about going to the one who by the word of his mouth were the heavens made and all the hosts by the breath of his mouth? God spoke, Jesus spoke and everything became. Shouldn't he be the one that we ought to run to instead of, of you, know, you know, running to our to our to our car workshop because our car is not working or or to our to our MP because you know my water pipe bursts and whatever uh, whatever you know how about going to God Paul 
call a rather insignificant man by his own admission had this to say about faith. But first, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. This is what Paul wrote about himself. For his letters say they were, uh, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contempt... Con contempt oh, I... I yeah. His presence is weak. I've got, a, I've got a bad leg. All right, it's weak. My knees hurt. And I stumble all over my words. But his, you know, he is saying that I'm a nobody. I'm not somebody that people, it's not like Saul, you know, was head and shoulders above, uh, above everybody. You know, he, he looks like a Greek god. But that's what he said about himself. However, look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Here was an insignificant man whose speech was contemptible. But yet he said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Understand one thing. Faith in God is superior above all things. The faith of Paul was not compromised when God did not answer his, his request. Instead, it strengthened his faith. I preached this recently, 2 Corinthians chapter See, even my speech is contemptible. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. And he said unto, okay, so he had a thorn in his side. All right? And, God, and, and he actually besieged God three times to take it from him. Look at this. And he said, uh, you know, uh, okay, I, I, I don't have verse 8. You know, you can, you can refer to verse 8. But here's God's answer to Paul's prayer. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Then what did Paul say? Paul said in response to that, most gladly. He didn't say, well, you know, I'll think about it first. He said, most gladly, therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. If my leg hurts some more, glory and honor be to God that I can rely on him even more that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. What do you say? For when I am weak, then am I strong. It is in our, it is, it, you know, it is in our weakest moment and when we are least able that God is most able, the superiority of faith. Because of Christ, the child of God, who has been adopted by God, that, you know, that he or she may call the Almighty God Father. Look at Romans 8, 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. No, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. God, because of Christ, through Christ, has adopted you whereby we cry, Abba, Father, and the adoption of all, you know, also opened the same door that was opened to Paul and all other children of God, that we may be able to approach God's throne of grace with bonus. Hebrews 4.16 uh, 4, Let us therefore come boldly. Let's not come meekly say, mm, no, or, you know, we just, let us come boldly. God's throne is that. I will go there and I will ask God. I will tell God. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. But may I encourage you, not just in time of need, how about at all times? Go to his throne of grace and boldly exalt him, thank him, give him the honor and the glory that he so richly deserves. All right, to the lost, there's no such adoption yet. And certainly no access to his grace yet. The only prayer of the lost, you know, the lost people can pray unto God until the cows come home, until pigs fly. God will not hear them. God will not hear your prayers if you regard iniquity. The laws are always regarding iniquity and therefore God will not hear. However, God will hear one prayer of the wicked 
And that is the prayer of repentance and faith. God, I am a sinner. I repent. I trust in Christ. Please save me. That is the only prayer of the lost that God will hear. Perseverance of faith. Genuine faith is not a preference, unlike emotional decisions. It is a conviction. When, it is a con- when I'm convicted of something, it's something that is firm, it's unshakable. You know, I'm, I'm convicted that God is real. Jesus is my savior. People can say all sorts of things about me. All right, that will not change my faith and belief in God and in Christ one iota. Genuine faith perseveres because uh, uh, it believes and knows the truth and understands that the end of faith, or rather the end of faith, it is Jesus Christ himself. Look at, what, look at what some of these otherwise ordinary but faithful men and women were able to achieve when they looked to God instead of circumstances or themselves. All right, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 to, through 40. A bit, you know, just a bit to read, but anyway, I will read it. For what shall I say? What shall I more say? For the time would, for time, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson, of Japheth, of David also, of, of, that, of Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Daniel went into the den of lions. His faith wasn't in, you know, good kitty cat, you know, don't come to me or you close your mouth or maybe I feed you something and don't eat me. His faith wasn't in, his faith was in God. Not in Nebuchadnezzar. Not in lions. Not in anything. His faith was in God and stopped the mouths of lions. Right? Quenched the, vi- the, vi- the violence of fire. His three companions, they were thrown into this Hot furnace of fire. And what did, Nebuch- and, and, and what did King Nebu see? There's a fourth one, right? We threw three in. How come there's a fourth one? And he looks like a son, like, like son of God. All right? Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. Paul said, you know, when I am weak, then am I strong. Wax valiant in fight, turn to flight the armies of the aliens. We're not talking about space aliens. We're talking about all right, so who is an alien here? Did you just raise your hand? No, you're a permanent resident, so you're not, so you're not an alien, all right? Oh, per- <laughs> permanent. All right. Women received their dead raised to life again. Martha and Mary received their brother uh, uh, no, Lazarus when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, and he did in his burial clothes. And others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection, the perseverance of faith. Because there's something better and because of conviction, I am not going to budge. People were burned at the stake, at stakes. They didn't budge. All right? Let me, fi- let me, let me finish reading that they might obtain a better resurrection and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Paul was stoned and Paul was imprisoned and subsequent, and, and ultimately Paul was beheaded. They were stoned and they were sawn asunder. I believe I, I, the prophet Isaiah was sawn in half in a, in a, in a, in a, in a tree trunk, right? And tempted and was slain. Jesus Christ was tempted. 40 days and nights he didn't eat. I don't know. If I don't eat for a couple of hours, I'm hungry already. In fact, I'm hungry right after I've had lunch, dinner, and breakfast. All right? And some of us are like that. Give me a steak. Yes, more, please. Moo. Oh, um, um, uh, where, where am I? Uh, they saw the sun that were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. And what did Pastor Jesse preach about, uh, pre- preach about this morning? Right? The prophet John. Being destitute, John was destitute. He didn't have money. He was a voice crying in the wilderness. He didn't declare, I am John. No, he says, I am a voice. Right? Being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Like what God has to say about these people, of whom the world was not worthy. Amen. 
They wandered in deserts and in, in mountains and in dens and, cave, and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Ooh, you mean they were not saved? No, absolutely not. They received not the promise. Verse 40, God having provided some, thing, uh, some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Despite adversities, all right? But okay, look at verse 13 of, uh, of, of, of Hebrews 11. Verse 13 says what? Coming back to this thing about not having received the promise, look at verse 13. These all died, uh, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. And were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. All right, what do we, you know, how are we saved? We say, we're saved now by looking back upon Christ. The people before Christ looked forward to Christ, to the, you know, you know, you know, you know to his death, burial, and resurrection. You know, having the, the, despite adversities, even unto persecution, suffering, and death, the conviction of faith of these people were all unwavering. The perseverance and conviction of faith, the application of faith. Now, I'll be done very soon. All right? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, my, my, my sermon seems to have uh, taken on a life of its own. Application of faith. The application of faith is simple. How about this? In all areas of our lives, Hebrews 11, 6, For without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I will seek God in one area of my life, but not in another area of my life. How does that work? If you are his child, you ought to seek God in all areas of your life. Right? Where are you today regarding faith? Regarding faith? Look at Psalm chapter 90, verse 12. All right, we read this last week. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And to those of you here who are not saved yet, number your days and apply your hearts unto wisdom for who knows what's going to happen the next hour, the next minute, the next second. All right? Before I end, before I end, before I, I, I come to my closing, I will, I will say this. You know, the same uncle who's in the hospital right now, all right, I've had another uncle who recently went through the same thing that this uncle is, is undergoing, but the other uncle fell and fractured his hip. I think he had COVID, was in the hospital, had heart attacks, had dialysis and all this sort of thing, and he got better. So, so this cousin, my, my cousin who's the son of, this, of, my dying, of the dying uncle right now, took hope in that. He said, well, there's a glimmer of hope for my father because, you know, my father's going through the same thing that your father went through, and therefore, you know, he must, he, 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 therefore he, he will get better, or he may get better. But no, this morning I received a message from him saying that he's, that he's taken a, a, a turn for the worse. He's had another heart attack, and the doctors are telling him, to, are telling the family to be prepared, and, there's, and all they can do for him is all options are, are, are exhausted. Be prepared and just make him as comfortable as possible. They have taken him off a dialysis machine. I think I said this earlier. He started swelling up already. I don't know. Just, just now, before, before the message, I asked my cousin, so how's your father? He says, stable as this, as this morning. But honestly speaking, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You don't know what's going to happen today. You're not gonna, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. All right? So in closing, faith does not end with salvation. Faith begins with salvation. You know, the lives of Christians, genuine Christians, ought to be a life of faith, of total dependence on God. If we can entrust, I said this, if we can entrust our eternal souls to Christ to save, why can't we entrust everything else to Him? Hmm? All right? Is it possible that what we want does not align with God, with what, 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 what God wants for us? Pastor Sun said earlier, you know, the will of God. E Christians or so-called professing Christians says, well, I do not know what the will of God is for me in my life. 
Why not? The will of God is clearly imprinted in the Bible. Read the Bible. I've read the Bible many times over. I still do not know what God's will is for, uh, will is for me. Oh my goodness. All right? The thing is that if what you want is not aligned with what God wants, then it's, then it's time to abandon what you want and get on God's bandwagon, to use a vernacular term. Be on the same page as God, for the end of God's blessings is unimaginable. All right? Again, as usual, if you're not saved today, time to avail yourself of the grace of God that, that who can and will save you for all eternity by repentance and faith, because he does not want you to suffer his penalty for sin, which is why Jesus Christ suffered that on your behalf. But a free gift is not a free gift until you claim it, until you appropriate it, until you use it. I had a, I had a, I had a grab coupon, right? Ten dollars off or something like that. It was valid until what? First week of December, which is past already. All right. Um, I didn't use it simply because I like to drive myself around. Right? So that voucher was not realized. It's expired. I can't use it anymore. All right? So the thing is that the free gift of God, that salvation, re, you know, remains that until you claim it. All right? God does not want you to suffer his penalty for sin. Jesus has already done that. What are you going to do? So, look at this. What does it say? Atheists be like, this is my grandfather. You know, honestly, it takes a whole lot more faith to believe that than to believe God said, I made the world in, seven, in six days. And on the seventh day, I rested. All right? So the thing is, faith. Where is your faith today? Are you, you know, are you placing your faith in God and on God? Is he the focus of your faith day in and day out? 